guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Well, today I'm going to be doing a new Academy Tone lesson. I have a complete guitar tone course for my Guitar Academy, the GL365 Academy at GuitarLessons365.com. This is going to be uh, one of those in there. We have a weekly artist, uh, kind of artist legendary tone that we're going to do. Um, and this week's is Comfortably Numb, and I'm going to let this just put this out on YouTube. I'll be doing this occasionally, but if you want more and more of these, um, you'll have to go to my uh, Guitar Academy and check it out. You'll see the link in the description to this page. And also, I'll be using a Lion 6 Helix for all of this. It's what I use for all of my uh, videos on YouTube. Um, I'm going to try to give you ways of uh, some ideas if you don't have a, a, even a modeling processor, you just use amps and pedals or whatever. I'll give you some good ideas of how to still achieve these uh, tones. Um, and we'll talk a bit, a little bit about what uh, David Gilmour actually used back in the day when he recorded this. Uh, but you can, if you do have a Helix or any of the Helix family of products, uh, you'll be able to download um, this preset as well too that I created for this uh, directly from my website. So that link will be in the description too. Um, all right, so uh, let's jump into it here. Oh, by the way, please follow if you, if you haven't followed already on this YouTube channel. Uh, and, uh, you know, ring the little notification bell so you know we're at least a new lesson and all that good stuff. All right, so like I said before, I'm using a Lion 6 Helix. It's my favorite, you know, processor to use for creating tones because I need to do a lot of them here on YouTube. So I have decided to kind of uh, throw my hat in the ring in this guitar tone world <laughs> on YouTube, which I know is a mess. Uh, so I'm going to go through and tell you what I did. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, things that you can uh, and give you ideas of how to do this with your own gear. So let's talk about the essentials of what I'm using here. All right, so I'm going to kind of show you the screenshot here of what I've got going on in my Helix. This is the you know, Helix edit software, so the HX edit. So um, I am using uh, what, what David Gilmour used. Um, his distortion pedal was a, a big muff. So this is Electro Harmonics Big Muff uh, model. Um, and then we have, after the, the big muff in his signal chain, he used uh, an overdrive pedal, a uh, color sound overdrive pedal. Uh, yeah, that's usually kind of used, and we'll see that, that it's kind of used really just kind of tame uh, some of the, the big muff, the kind of shrillness of the big muff. So that usually comes after the big muff. Um, in this instance at least. And then we have the amp. Now, um, I'm using, uh, on, on the Helix, it's called the Watt 100, and it's, uh, it is a, a model of the Watt DR103 amp. So that's one of the uh, big David Gilmore amps that he used. Um, now, depending on what amp you have, what you need is an amp that has a lot of headroom. So something that you can really crank and it's not gonna break up and it's not gonna distort. Um, so that's why David Gilmore loved those high watt amps. They had a lot of headroom, but you can get that other with like, you know, Fender bas basements and stuff like that. You, there's a lot of amps that have a lot of clean headroom. So uh, regardless, if you have an amp that you can do that and you can keep it clean and crank it, um, that's what you'll need for this because we are using the, uh, we're going to be using, you know, mostly the big muff for the distortion and obviously the overdrive pedal as well. Now, coming out of the, um, uh, the amp, he went into another speaker, um, a rot rotary speaker. So he used, uh, I believe it was a Yamaha RA200 rotary speaker. Um, now, I, have, I don't have a rotary speaker model in this, but we do have uh, effect pedals that, are, that recreate that sound. So that's what I've thrown in here. Okay, so this is just uh, kind of an emulation of a Leslie rotor rotary cabinet, so that's about as close as I could get to it. So if you have any kind of rotary speaker things, it's interesting, it's kind of a very slight um, effect, but it just kind of gives you, it just gives the, the tone of just this kind of ambience about it uh, that's kind of hard to put into words. But So it's, it's, it's really cool, but it's, it's a very um, subdued uh, addition to the tone. All right, and then we have the delay pedal. So I'm using what, what David Gilmore used. He used a TC Electronic uh, 2290. So this is the um, 2290 
it's called duct delay the uh, when they they model the 2290 pedal line six so um, that's why I'm using this specific delay um, and then there's two other pedals two other effects that we have here in the signal chain um, that most likely were not were added after the fact um, so in like post-production one would be uh, a compressor um, it's really just used to kind of give this tone a little bit more punch um, a little bit more sustain as well. Um, so I am using uh, a model of an MXR uh, Dynacomp pedal. Um, and then we have, which is called the Red Squeeze in Helix. And at the end, also, I'm just using a Hall Reverb, which would have also been created kind of um, in a post-production. wasn't actually physically coming out of you know David Gilmore's amp and that's how when you see him play live too a lot of all that reverb that drench of reverb is coming off the board it's not coming off of his actual his rig there all right so really the essentials here though are obviously the high watt amp and the big muff and the you know the delay that's 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 a huge part of his sound so let's go through this and I kind of show you the settings like I said if you have a helix uh, helix LT um, Helix native, uh, you can you can download this uh, preset itself from the link below. So I'm going to at first um, talk about the amp. So you can see here that the settings that I have on this amp, the essential settings, and what are amp that you want. I really am pushing this amp up to 10, um, but it's like I said, it's a very clean amp. So I'm just really trying to get that. That, um, that kind of natural compression going and just really pushing the amp, but since it's such a clean, such hot, uh, great headroom in these amps, um, it's not gonna break up and we're gonna use the distortion for that. Uh, I keep the bass at about, you know, just kind of neutral, about five. Um, and I'm, I'm, these are pretty mid-heavy amps. Uh, they have a lot of amps, the high watt amps. So I actually backed off a little bit on the mids here. Um, you, like I said, depending on what you have, what kind of pickups you have, like these are kind of some stock of uh, single coils, um, you might want more mids. Uh, he typically liked the fact that they had a lot of mids in their signal, uh, in their sound, and, and so, you know, really make the guitar cut. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, you can, I get the treble settings at a little bit over 50%. Um, so um, the one big thing about this here is I have the, the volume really cranked here, the channel volume, but I have the master volume kind of rolled back. So we, I don't want it breaking up or overriding stuff. So I have that at about a third, about 30% really um, of, you know, what the channel volume was. All right, so if you wanted to hear the amp by itself, let's turn off everything else that I have. Bye bye delay. And then we have the amp by itself. So as much as I'm pushing it, it's not breaking up. So that's a good thing. Now we're gonna add um I'm just gonna go ahead and add this uh the compressor pedal. So this MXR Dynacomp, kind of a standard classic pedal, and I just had the sensitivity at about 30%, um, and the mix at about 43%, so it's kind of moderate settings. It's gonna push it a little bit more, but you can see what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to give it a little bit more sustain, um, and it, you know, it does kind of make the notes kind of punch a little bit. So the big daddy here in the signal chain is this big muff. And when we initially turn it on, it's gonna sound quite shrill. All right, so here's the big muff. So now I have this the sustain crank quite a bit here um, to about 75 percent. 
Um, and I'm kind of rolling the tone back. It's not, I'm not kind of doing a flat out, I'm just kind of rolling back to about 40% there. And the, the level, I'm just, the level is really kind of based on um, kind of where the amp out, you know, sometimes when you kick in an, um, a pedal, it could decrease the volume or raise the volume. So a lot of times that's just kind of balancing that stuff out for your particular settings. But you can see that this, uh, the big muff pedal uh, just kind of has, when you really crank it, it kind of adds kind of a shrill top end to it. So that, you know, some people, some people love it. Um, but what David Gilmore did, and I think it was pretty much just to kind of tame that high end, that toppy part of the uh, big muff pedal was add his um, his uh, color sound overdrive pedal in front of it, um, and when you do that, you can still feel, hear the dirt in there, but it really tames it down and gives it a lot warmer, a lot smoother sound. Um, but I'm not doing anything fancy with it. I've just got the drive halfway, bass halfway, mids just a little bit over halfway, and then the treble halfway, and then the output at 70. So it's a, not trying to do anything but tame that big muff is all we're trying to do. So you still got that, the, um, that saturation that the big muff's creating, but without that top end. All right, so now let's get down to the fun effects. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna engage here the um, rotary speaker. So this went out of whether he bypassed the original speaker or ran it through both speakers, I do not know. Uh, but what I do know is that he went through a, uh, a, the Yamaha rotary speaker and had it on the slow setting. And if you can hear the difference, let's see if you can, you can hear it. <laughs> So right there, if I drop, lost a little volume, I could boost up the level a little bit to match. See, if you could just hear it, I'll kind of A-B it without the rotary speaker. Same lick. Not with it. So it's quite a, when you hear it by itself, what not in the mix, you can hear it quite a bit there. Uh, but the important things here are, I got it on the slow setting. If you're not familiar with the rotary speakers and how they have a fast setting and a slow setting. Uh, and the slow speed there at 3.2 and uh, 4.3 hertz as the fast speed. The ramp time, medium. Um, so if you have a, a, a kind of a rotary a pedal or a plug-in, you're going to see a lot of these kind of you know, affect, you know, things that you can uh, adjust. And the mix, I'm trying to do it relatively low, about 25%. You might hear a slight difference in uh, the first solo in Comfortably Numb and the second one. I think the second one has a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit higher in the mix, maybe up to 30% or so um, of this, uh, this rotary speaker. And then we have the delay. So he used the uh, TC Electronic, Electronic uh, 2290. So now this is going to start sounding like the tone a lot closer here. Um, and I have for the delay settings, um, it's at 55, uh, uh, 550, I'm sorry, uh, milliseconds. All right. And the feedback at about 30%. So that's kind of a moderate, moderate feedback. We don't want this thing going on ringing for like, you know, hours and hours. All right. And then the mix you know, pretty high up in the mix, about 40% there. So we have this. All right, so it's really starting to coming, coming together. This is the ducking delay, so I do have some ducking on it. Um, if you don't know what ducking delay is, it's kind of just, 
let you know so you don't have things that are kind of overriding. You, you hear more delay when you stop or when things get below a certain level than you do when you're actually uh, soloing. So, uh, what we don't need to talk about, it's not even that essential for this. It's what's the most essential is the, uh, the millisecond that it's at, the feedback, so how many repeats that you're going to get, and the mix level. That is the most important part. And then the reverb, in order for us to recreate uh, what the sound actually sounds like on the recorded, you need to add reverb. Uh, like I said, his is used. His was done like post post production and stuff, so he doesn't ha he didn't use a reverb pedal. Um, but when I have, so I basically have a, a basic hall reverb here um, with the decay a little over fifty percent there. Uh, the pre delay at like twenty two milliseconds, and the mix. Uh, which is the important part of it there at 32 percent so that's uh, going to give you that very ambient so a lot of space but it's, it should sit well pretty well if you have a good backing track uh, in the mix so it's So that's how we piece it together. So it's really just up to you whether if you have a Helix, you could you know, piece, piece it together like this, or really any modeling processor should have comparable effects to this. Um, should have you know a vintage delay and, um, and 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 reverb there, and then have you know the the proper you know big muff. You know who, who doesn't have that modeled. Or if you actually have these, uh, if you're you're just a strict pedal board amp guy, uh, it's the the essential part of this is to have an amp with a lot of headroom, um, and to hit it with, um, if you got something similar to the big muff, or, or an overdrive pedal that um, you know has some of that kind of sizzle to it. Um, I, I, to me, I, I think it sounded better to kind of use the big muff and then just kind of uh, mellow it out a little bit. Uh, with the color sound, um, but that will get you there. And then everything else, if you have a little rotary speaker, probably the least needed one was the rotary speaker effect. If you wanted to leave that out, obviously this tone still sounds great without it. <laughs> So it makes me want to relearn this solo, I guess. Maybe I should. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, you guys in my academy, keep requesting uh, new artist tone lessons. And we're going to have a new one every week. And if you have any questions about the actual signal chain itself, look back at all the signal chain uh, lessons. I'll go through all these effects individually and the orders that you can put them in. Um, and uh, we're having a lot of fun um, putting a lot of cool artist tones together. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to start doing this, creating your own presets and your own personal tone as well.